Have you heard about Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act? If not, pay attention. This is a big deal for the internet. The Section 230 Act protects websites and platforms from being held liable when users post something illegal to their platforms. This is essentially protecting free speech on the internet. Both Trump and Biden have called for the end of the act. But is that necessary? We know social media companies should create better incentives and do a better job of moderation on their platforms, but getting rid of Section 230 could have us facing internet censorship, just like China. Whoa, I don't know, man, I don't like it. If I understand really what this whole thing means is that some people are getting banned from different apps, right? Twitter, YouTube, for example. Um, Alex Jones is the big example, you know, right. probably the most ho one of the most high profile ones. Is he kind of wild in what he says, you know? Is he yeah. wrong in what he says? Well, though? I mean, it's it, the thing is, it's his opinion, right? And it's kind of a public space, yep. And that's that's kind of the argument here: is who has control to remove these things, but not remove other people? What are you? How are you feeling? If you have this huge platform, if you have this gift, and someone is paying you over here to promote a certain topic or agenda or service, and then you don't do the same for all the other over here, that could be, a, it could be concerning because you can, you can tend to sway the public. So overall, I'm still against it because it's, it's freedom of speech and I think we need that. I yeah, mean, one of the bigger concerns is if you look at the way things are managed in China or the oversight, they don't have anything on the internet that they don't want because it's state run. We don't want to allow people inciting violence or hate speech or anything like that. And I think the social media companies are trying to do better to, to snuff that out. I think they are doing right. that. Who deems what as a hate speech? So if I say, I don't like red pants, then if, and there's a party out there that says, we are the pro red pants people. Well then, just for, just like, so then would I be deemed as someone that's saying, hey, speech about the red I, In some people's eyes, yeah, I think then you make a great point. I mean, and I know certain people who like to say that even, even hate speech shouldn't be censored because at least then you know, right? you know where they are. Right. You know where the crazy people are. I, those particular groups getting a higher platform are more space to speak than other said groups. Just, for sure. You know, so, yeah, but I think this is very interesting. Overall, the 230s Act, it, it, it would, uh, progress us more towards where China is at, in which, to me, that's that's so un-American. Slippery slope, right? Slippery slope. Yeah. Absolutely. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to my Jelly Bean Factory. That's what David Klein is saying. Founder of Jelly Belly and self-proclaimed candy man, wants to be a real-life Willy Wonka. But he can't hit the notes like Mr. Wonka, allegedly. Klein is conducting a series of treasure hunts, and if you find the treasure, you win $5,000, and you can then take part in the ultimate larger treasure hunt to win a candy factory. Tickets have already been sold out in California and Florida. Whoa, if this wasn't like every child's like little, you know, child dream, right? To go into a Willy Wonka factory. Child, how about adult? <laughs> I mean, first of all, I thought you were saying you had a jelly bean factory for a second, so I was like, why didn't you tell me about that before? Um, I'm holding out on you. Yeah. So. <laughs> This is pretty cool. I think it's about 50 bucks per ticket like okay. to, to, in, to enter, and I think there's a thousand per state. The head of Jelly Belly has the chance to make 2.5 million just off selling Jeez. these tickets. So is there an alternative, or ulterior, excuse me, ulterior motive here potentially? Right. Right? There always might be. Well, you know, it's the Dennis Association that's backing this up. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> The travel industry was one of the hardest hit by COVID. But now is the time to prepare for the next trip and Away Luggage is running its first ever sale. The quote, we're having a sale sale, went live yesterday, which includes discounts between 15 and 50% off some of their products. But there was one small issue. The site crashed early Wednesday morning because there were so many people visiting it. No need to worry, it's back up and ready for buyers to visit. Woo, crashing sites to get luggage to go on trips during COVID. I think it's interesting that some of these links are potentially sponsored this brings up the deep the bigger question is you know why did this why did this site crash right right I think um, a lot of people were rushed towards it because they were reading something else and maybe they didn't really understand what they were getting into they were right. being influenced to something so that brings up maybe a deeper question of these sponsored links and how do you how do you identify that or let people know so that they realize they may be reading an ad if you're going to a site for news but then you're kind of being canal to buy things. I think that's in a sense what we call that a conflict of interest, so to speak, or social media and these platforms, news platforms, they're, they're a powerful tool. And so we, we must be uh, very aware and careful of which way we're using them and what we go to them for. I mean, I think this goes back to one of our previous stories that we were kind of talking about, right? So. Um, well, as far as luggage is concerned, are you in the market? Am I on the market for luggage? No, man, I take my stuff in a duffel bag. <laughs> Whatever works for you. Yeah. Whatever works, yeah. I actually have one suitcase that I got maybe like 12 years ago, 13 years ago. I think it's Hello Kitty, but don't judge oh, me. Oh, nice. Look yeah. at you. Hello Kitty got a guy. Hey, if you have the pink 
suitcase on the conveyor, you're not gonna. Oh, look, it's, like, not you, a, it's not a question it's as to which one it's is yours. It's absolutely yours. the worst. Like you put your luggage down and like it's in like this. It, everything looks bland. Everything looks the same, and you can't not tell. Mine. No, not mine. Not yours. Not my Hello It's the Kitty. pink Hello Kitty. All right, guys. Thank y'all for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm with my host, Cliffy, and it is your boy uh, uh, Smiley. And we'll see y'all next time. See ya. Bye.